my name is Yi. I'm from the School of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering. Uh, today's my topic is on 3D printing. Sorry, next slide. So my title is on 3D printing, and I'm sure a lot of us have already seen what 3D printing is, and uh, a lot of news being reported in the social media on online about what 3D printing can do. 3D printing can be used to print many things, from a car to a house, to medical devices, to fashions, to even food. So anything that you can think of, some of them can be printed, some of them cannot be printed. So I guess there needs to be another set of research about the infodemic around 3D printing by the social science school. Huh? Now for 3D printing research, because of a lot of advantages that we can get in terms of research and commercial applications, it is a privilege that at NTU, we are actually the place that hosts two flagship research centers in 3D printing. One is Singapore Center for 3D Printing, set up in 2014 with the target to train 100 PhD students in 3D printing. And the other one is actually just very recently, HP NTU Corp Lab, not just looking at 3D printing, but also surrounding the whole digital manufacturing value change. So this lab also look into 3D printing plus cybersecurity plus AI around the whole 3D printing landscape. And a little bit about myself, my research uh, is all around 3D printing. I work with different group of people from medical schools, from hospitals, from companies. We print metals, polymers, and bioprintings, creating new solutions to look into what kind of boundary we can still push in that particular industry. There are many elements around 3D printing, from materials to design, to structures, to testing, and in the end, what kind of functions that we want to build into the 3D printed part that we cannot get from the conventional methods. So today, I'm not going to bore you with all these details. I'm going to bore my PhD students with all this, but not you. So today, I would like to share with you my perspective of 3D printing. Why is this such an amazing technology that it can literally impact the way we live and the way we do things? And to make it short, and concise, I summarize it into just four words, practically one word for you, 3D printing is free. So what is that free? Let's look at it. What is F-R-E-E? -E. So that first F represents freedom in design. So this is a very good takeaway, right? Freedom in design, that 3D printing started off as a digital file. So it is actually free from a lot of manufacturing constraints. The digital file can be changed anytime very easily at minimum cost that bring us one step further into advanced manufacturing for the new industry 4.0. And you can look at this picture, it shows that from the same power powder, we can actually design different things and create the parts from the same power powder, regardless of the shapes and the complexity of the parts. So this technology actually allows us to have the flexibility and also the freedom in terms of manufacturing to support high mix and high volume manufacturing. And the other key advantage that we can get is not just using 3D printing as a manufacturing tool. Using the same material that we print, we can print parts that is as strong as possible so that we can use it in an aeroplane and it can fly in the sky. But using the same kind of material, overlay with our design thinking, we can actually create a part that is flowing and drips around our body as comfortable as possible. So this is all about the design thinking and capability that we can gain from 3D printing rather than using 3D printing as just a manufacturing tool. Now this is an example that I would like to show you. This is very interesting because if you talk about dress, we have seen it, we have seen how people make it. Instead of thinking about cloth and needles and craftsmanship, now, in the world of 3D printing of dress, we are talking about powder material, design of the CAD file, processing of powder, depowdering operation, post-processing steps. And instead of talking about uh, how do we lay the cloth on the table and then cut it to shapes, we are talking about printing volume in the print build chamber. So all this shows us the new way of thinking is now possible as long as we are able to tap into and also have the correct understanding about this technology and the sciences behind 3D printing. Now the next is R. So R, very easily we'll think about 3R. And the 3R, uh, you must know already, right? Now we are talking about sustainability, 
the earth is ill, which is true. You know, do a lot of the call. We need to make a lot of correct decision now to bring us out of that situation. So three R for three D printing: reduce, reuse, and recycle. And how would three D printing is related to that? First is reduce because three D printing is actually creating a parts from powder. We just add where it needs to be. We do not need to remove uh, additional parts from a prefix block of material like many of the conventional manufacturing technique, which is actually subtraction based. And in this case, this is additive based. So we just add instead of subtract. And instead of storing many parts, like the current way of making things, we need to have spare parts, warehouse to store the spare parts. But now we just store digital files. So instead of storing the parts, we store digital files and we create the parts on demand. And that will allow us to reduce the total carbon footprint of the whole product life cycle. And the other uh, way of 3D printing is impactful for environmental effect is we can now have research to create recycled material, recycling plastic, which is the number one problem now we have for the earth, for the sea, that we can have the possibility of turning those material into filament and then process it using 3D printing techniques to create functional parts. And this example, this very beautiful architecture is actually a printed habitat in Italy that make use of 3D print technology using locally sourced material. So locally sourced material give us additional advantage. Now we can print something, we can create something, a long lasting solution that help with the local ecosystem as well. And this is very beautiful marine uh, environment. It's a proof of concept to show that the 3D printed coral reef can now help to restore the local ecosystem of the coral reef. This is uh, one example located as Australia. The other three R that are not so well known compared to reduce, reduce, and recycle is actually replace, reduce, and refine of animal testing. This is very specific to biotechnology and testing applications, the goal is to replace animal testing if possible. If that is not possible, can we reduce it? And if that is not possible, then can we refine the experiment so that the animals can feel a little bit better or we can supplement those experiments with data information. And how 3D printing helps? There's one branch that grows out of 3D printing, which is largely based on the technology of 3D printing. But instead of printing polymer or metal or powder, we are printing living material. We are printing gel material, soft material, that the cells can actually live inside those material. And then we process it using the same technology that we process polymer or electronics. We assemble those cell-containing material into the predefined shapes, and we grow that material. And in this case, this is not a material, this is actually living systems that can be further mature and differentiate and then carry out the biological functions. So printing of organs could be many, many years away because we are actually very well designed. This is such a complicated system, we cannot say that we have a way to replicate it easily. But creating a subsystem with the correct function to represent the actual biological system that we can reach. So creating Bioprinted in vitro models can actually help a lot to replace or reduce animal testing or help to support decision making. And that's how 3D printing helps with the three R's for alternative testing. Now come to E. The E stands for empowering and enabling. So empowering, empowering all of us. A lot of times when we have a product, it's actually a brainchild of a designer. Then the designer will pass to the maker, which is the engineer and the manufacturer. Then the manufacturer will pass to the user, which is us. We are using it. There are no connections between the designer and the consumer other than perhaps the, the user study, user requirement that they get from a lot of uh, market research that they do. But now with 3D printing, there is a platform that will allow the user to provide immediate feedback to the designer. Or even, they can actually co-create the solution that is called mass customization. So we are creating a part just for you, but using the general platform technology of 3D printing. So in that case, it empowers each of these groups to look into the functions that previously not accessible to them. So now they can actually do that and in 
in the word of Prof. Subhas Rudd, there is actually interdisciplinary interactions. Now it's actually enabled. And it also level the playing field because the technology is accessible. So we are now giving the ability to design, the ability to make, the ability to use the card to anyone. So anyone in the world now can make anything as long as the imaginations and the ability to use the process is established in that community. So that is the empowering part and the enabling. From what I see, 3D printing is actually very elegant. So imagine that comparing to a metal processing, this casting and forging is dangerous, it is hot. But while the coming to the landscape of 3D printing, we print metals all contained in the systems. We are printing powder. So things are now safe and clean. And this is such a elegant process that is a very suitable platform for any groups to come in and exercise their ability to design and understanding. And especially 3D printing is actually a holistic process. It's not just a silo single step the designer design and then the operator operate the machine. The machine operator need to understand the capability so that the design actually well matched to the process. And the part have to design so that the material are well defined now. So everything actually interconnected and such a holistic broad-based T-shape kind of problem is actually a very good platform to enable women in engineering to exercise their ability in solving complex problems. Right, there is actually a society set up, women in 3D printing, they're actually doing a lot of work to, com uh, to promote this technology, to encourage more women to come into engineering. And lastly, the last E is actually expressions of love. Love not just about loving ourselves, of course we do a lot of things so that we leave the society a little bit better within our time. And love is not just loving of our immediate next door or our immediate family, but actually really the love for the humanity, for the opportunity when there's a need that we are able to extend our hand to that particular group in needs and establish that culture of care. So with 3D printing as an accessible technology, there is this example showing a wonderful way of using technology to help different community and globally connect them. So this is actually a still ongoing, ongoing online community called eEnable. It's actually an online community that links those who need the prosthetic with the person who design and able to print that part and deliver to the person who need it within their community. And so far, they actually have linked up a lot, of, set up a lot of localized nodes to cater for the needs of the particular community. And this. It's a very wonderful demonstration that 3D printing allows new ways to co-create and also open innovation. There can be many other platforms to cater for different situations, and this is just one of it. And lastly, what is the spirit of human, if not now, when we are in a crisis? So we have seen the time that, during the peak time, we have seen the difficult time that we do not have enough PPE for our people, for our healthcare worker, and those are the times that we see a lot of stories actually reported by using 3D printing to create masks, to create PPE, to create door openers, to create uh, many other devices, all surrounding the immediate needs of COVID when the supply chain was actually totally disrupted, when we had nothing to come in because the trade of supply chains had been disrupted at that time, when borders were closed. And luckily, right now, we have found a way together how to get that trade and borders reopened, at least for the uh, emergency goods that we need for public health. But still, the efforts continue. The effort continue to see what else 3D printing can be used as a long-term solution. And that is actually a very critical capability needed by every government to have that during time of crisis. So this is my last slide. This is also my reflection on 3D printing that this is not just a tool, this is not just a scientific tool to write papers, to generate publications, but it's really is a means. It's a way to free up imaginations. It's the key to power, to empower and to enable, and it is a means for us to sustain disruptions and very importantly, to share, to share among everybody. 
Thank you for your time.